When we think of things that release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, we often think cars and factories. But a huge emitter of CO2 that's often overlooked is cement. Concrete is used to build our bridges, our dams, our roads, our sidewalks, even our skyscrapers. This material has helped us build civilizations, but it has also strained our environment in the process. For every one ton of cement produced, there is a ton of CO2 that is released into the atmosphere. Every year, more than 4 billion tons of cement are produced, accounting for around 8% of global CO2 emissions. To put that in context, if the cement industry were a country, it would be the third largest emitter of CO2 in the world. Atmospheric CO2 levels are directly correlated with rising global temperatures, and both have been rising drastically. If the planet's temperature gets too warm, climate scientists predict bouts of extreme weather, rising sea levels, and scarce food supplies. It's the second highest industrial source of CO2 on the planet. But without cement, concrete doesn't hold up skyscrapers. Most of the emissions associated with concrete actually occur in the production of the cement. The way that you generally make cement is you mine limestone from the earth and then you mix it with some other things and heat it up in a kiln to very high temperatures, about 1500 degrees Celsius. Then there's a chemical transformation that takes place and there's carbon dioxide that's emitted as part of that chemical transformation and also carbon dioxide emitted with the energy associated with heating up the kiln in which the cement is produced to such high temperatures. New Jersey-based startup Solidia Technologies. Solidia says their cement mixture and curing process can cut CO2 emissions by up to 70%. In order to reduce the carbon footprint of its cement, Solidia Technologies had to slightly alter the chemistry of the mixture. In order to make Portland cement, you use limestone and sand. We take exactly the same raw materials, but we change the recipe a little bit. We mix it about 50-50, and that reaction happens at a much lower temperature, about 1,200 degrees Celsius. Now, what that means to the cement company is instead of emitting one ton of CO2 for every ton of cement, they emit about 40% less than that, and they use 30% less energy to make that same amount of cement. They also get more cement with the same amount of raw materials. The manufacturing team has also used two-phase cement to separate the waste rock, putting the waste rock in the waste rock and removing the waste rock in the waste rock. Another benefit? Solidia helps with water conservation. The concrete industry uses about three trillion liters of water a year. That's about a million Olympic swimming pools. Solidia's technology doesn't consume any water. And, and I can, instead of curing it in a week or two weeks or three weeks, it takes us 24 hours. So it's a lot easier for them to get it out in the market. So in the end, we actually are going to save the industry money. Right now, the, the Solidia product can only be made in a controlled environment. And so as a consequence, they can only make blocks. Whereas the vast majority of concrete is ready mix concrete. And that's what we see in the trucks that are driving around. Ready mix concrete accounts for nearly three fourths of all concrete used. So if Solidia technology is to go mainstream, it needs to find a way to make ready mix without the need for a strictly controlled environment. This silver tank is the newest thing in concrete. It's called Carbon Cure. This innovative system injects carbon dioxide into the concrete as it's being mixed. When the concrete hardens, those otherwise harmful emissions are sequestered forever, before they ever even reach our atmosphere. We actually convert the CO2 into a mineral. It's a stone. Mm -hmm. It's getting trapped in the concrete forever. And the best part about it is that the mineral itself actually improves the compressive strength of the concrete. Compression tests like this one prove that the concrete made with carbon cure is just as hardy as the traditional stuff. Ultimately, if this technology was deployed across the globe, we could reduce about 700 megatons of CO2 every year. And that's the same as taking 150 million cars off the road every year. This building behind us is all built using carbon cure concrete. That's right. It's 48,000 cubic yards of Thomas concrete made with carbon cure technology. A 12-story, $200 million development in the heart of one of Atlanta's trendiest neighborhoods. And every inch of concrete you see is infused with CO2. It's the largest structure carbon cure has ever worked on. 
So how many pounds of CO2 savings are we talking about here? In this building right here, it's going to be over 1.5 million pounds of CO2. If we could pretend that these were trees, it would be the same as 800 acres of forest sequestering CO2 for a year. Wow. 截至二零一六年，环保水泥在全球市占率仅百分之三点五。到了二零一八年，环保水泥的全球营收为两百一十四点二亿美元。业者预估，到二零二六年，环保水泥的获利能够增长至四百三十五点九亿美元。The company says global adoption of Solidia products would reduce CO2 emissions by 4% per year. That is double the CO2 savings that we would get if we grounded the entire aviation industry. Solidia also says it would reduce energy consumption by as much as 260 million barrels of oil and save 3 trillion liters of fresh water per year. 这是一个可以获利，同时兼顾爱地球、崇高理想的解决方案。但是，想要扭转传统水泥业者接受新思维，这条路还很漫长。